field, what we are going to see is performance capabilities demonstration by Indonesian FPU. To perform those capabilities, Indonesian FPU is equipped with equipment based on statement of unit requirement of MINUSMA. All personnel have passed a strict selection process and required to train at least seven months in this facility before leaving for duty. They have learned about UN policy knowledge and skills, navigation, marksmanship, survival, self-defense, and have a good physical fitness as well. As a cohesive unit, Indonesian FPU have a very good capabilities on riverine patrol, checkpoint operations, VIP escort, and public order management. Our special intervention team is expert on close quarter battle, airborne operation, explosive ordnance disposals, and hostage rescue operation. Total numbers of Indonesian FPU is 175, including 32 female officers that have equal capabilities as male officers. Indonesian FPU divided into three tactical platoon, one special intervention team, and one support unit. In this demonstration, it is assumed that Indonesian FPU has been deployed to the United Nations mission in Karana. Republic of Karana is a failed state that torn by civil war for decades. The existence of hostile armed groups create a big problem for local government and also other vulnerable people. The challenges we face here, the outside area of city of Karana is dominated by rocks and desert. The weather is get very hot Republic of Karana have some borders in another countries, and there is no border post control. That's why the UN fears the mandates of this mission is civilian protection, assisting humanitarian assistance, and facilitating a peaceful and fair election on 2024. Refer to those mandates, Indonesian FPU have some priority tasks. The first is providing civilian protection, promoting human rights, and assisting local police and another law enforcement agencies to maintain public order, and also involved in high risk operations ordered by head of police components. We can see here inside the red dot area, red dot line, is the AOR of Indonesian FPU. There are UN super camp with Indonesian FPU based and also United Nations country trim complex, local government, including local police and fire brigade, referring unit base, and also IDB camps near the airport. We will see in front of us very soon the demonstration of riverine patrol, checkpoint operations, VIP escort, public order management, and hostage rescue operation. And our master of ceremony will continue the show. MC, carry on. Thank you, Commander. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The Honorable, the Head of International Relations Division of Indonesian National Police, Inspector General Krishna Murti. His Excellency, UN Police Advisor, Mr. Faisal Shakar. Honorable Le Chef de la Division de la Police de Selection et de Recrutement, Monsieur Atayenegun. The Honorable Mr. Frederico Patuzo. Your Excellency, Miss Claire Louise Buckwell. The Honorable Miss Ablafima Wusem Nojigno. Ladies and gentlemen, all distinguished guests, 
very warm welcome to each every one of you here in the Indonesian National Police Peacekeeping Center in Serpong, Tangerang, Banten. Biang venue o Sangtral de Misiong Lang Ternasional de la Polis Ang Indonesian. In the moment, we will see the operational capabilities performance of Indonesian FPU that will be simulated to be deployed in peacekeeping mission of United Nations. For your information, this FPU is a troop consists of personnel who selected by strict type of selection and fulfill the abilities and competencies as United Nations occurred. Ladies and gentlemen, let's see together the profile of Indonesian new FPU. Indonesian Foreign Police Unit is a special unit for peacekeeping mission. Consists of 175 personnel, and among them, there are 32 police women. They were selected from all region and different units under Indonesian National Police Institution. All personnel need to pass various type selection process to get high competence and capabilities at United Nations requirements. All Indonesian FU personnel are mandated to understand about the UN core pre-deployment training materials, specialized training materials, gender perspective, and meet the standard of tactical police capabilities. And not less important, they have to support the personnel during the mission and all these capabilities will be received and expected as the outcomes of the pre-deployment training. The pre-deployment training will be conducted in seven months in Indonesian National Police Peacekeeping Center. In the other hand, Indonesian FPU is ready to deploy. 25% of its contingent consists of police women for peacekeeping mission. It shows that Indonesian FPU concerned about the UN values to have high integrity, professionality, and respect for diversity. We also expect women police to be a part of agent of change Women empower and prevent the sexual exploitation. Lastly, this new FPU comprised by special capabilities such as special intervention team, K9 unit, EOD team, counter drone, reverend unit. All these capabilities will be attached in Indonesian new FPU as soon as UN need. And finally, for conclusion, FPU Indonesia ready to be deployed in any United Nations mission. Our distinguished guests in this scenario assume that Indonesian FPU are already in the mission area in Karana Democratic Republic as a part of the United Nations mission in Karana. This contingent consists of 175 personnel and among them there are 32 qualified women police in general abilities and specific capabilities corresponding contingent on equipment from statement of unit requirement. This contingent also supported by special units such as Special Intervention Team or SIT, K9 Unit, UAV and Counter UAV Unit, Explosive Ordnance Disposal or EOD Unit, and Police Reverend Unit. In the other hand, the main duty of Indonesia FAU are protecting civilians, patrol in order... Ladies and gentlemen, in this moment we are seeing the patrol boat of Riverine Union from Indonesian FPU are doing routine patrol duty in their area of responsibility. The unit consists of eight personnel with capabilities of any pirates, law enforcement in water areas, and also to conduct search and rescue operations. Ladies and gentlemen, in the moment we see together there are three suspects who are members of armed group carrying out explosive liquid that will be transported to downtown through the river near border where the place of Indonesian FPU Riverine Unit Operation Area. Later, we will see how Riverine Unit of Indonesian FPU against the suspects. Ladies and gentlemen, we see that the suspects are fighting back. And the Reverend Unit got respond with shot at the Reverend Unit. It shows that the implementation directs use of force in imminent predation with the unit using lethal force. We also see right now Indonesian FPU personnel are able to handle self-medical procedure on their duty.
Ladies and gentlemen, we see that the backup team consists of UNDSS, local police, and medical team will take over the victims and the suspects. Local police assistance is crucial for assisting the next investigation. Ladies and gentlemen, please give applause to Indonesian FAU Riverin Unit. Ladies and gentlemen, mission component together with the local police have been investigated to the suspects and the UN result of the examination of the suspects. There is a plan that will be an action to attack the UN officials and UN assets in mission area because the existence of the UN is considered to disturb the efforts of armed group in continuing the conflict in Mali. Meanwhile, to face that, senior management team or SMT is conducting emergency meeting to set the escalation of level safety and security for UN premises. Then, implement strict standard procedure on the traffic of goods and people by involving the canine and backup by explosive ordnance disposal or EOD unit as a team response. After that, UNDS has issued warning alert about restriction activities for all company mission outside the UN premises. Ladies and gentlemen, Charlie Platoon consists of, of K-9 unit which capable to detect explosive materials and sniffer dog which handled by two police women who have a lot of experience in international mission of humanitarian operation in Turkey. Ladies and 
ladies and gentlemen, as we see together on the, on the screen, the checkpoint, it contains the personnel create checkpoints. It contains the personnel perform scene of drunken people and martial arts. And handcuffing suspects, searching public suspect, canine detect explosive and securing a EOD. Ladies and gentlemen, we will present you the checkpoint operation that will be conducted by Charlie Platoon as daily task. Checkpoint is a place where the officer is able to check the vehicle or pedestrian in order to conduct the circulation control measure. The checkpoint operation must be adjusted by UN mandate and conducted by FPU personnel. Madam Emeshu, Lapoang the control etang androa ula officer be control the vehicle ula pietong abang the vectue un measure the control de la circulation. Operation the control dua etre ajuste parlemang dat de lono emene par le personal de EPU. We can see that the APC is in standby position in case there is an immediate action they have to take. Then. The squad leader divides the zone of checkpoints, start from the right side, which begin with the funneling zone, deceleration zone, search zone, safe zone, and the holding area. Ladies and gentlemen, now we are suing together. At this time, Indonesian FU personnel are ready to implement checkpoint duties on the arena. Ladies and gentlemen, as we can see that there is a woman pedestrian entering the checkpoint zone. The searching procedure that is conducted to the pedestrian is accordance with the procedure in conducive situation. Once again, there is another pedestrian approaching the checkpoint zone. This time, a drunken man staggers and trying to enter the checkpoint zone. The officer stop him and prepare to do the searching procedure. But the pedestrian give a direct stride and kick towards the officer. But the officer is able to block his attack and lock his shoulders to the ground. That officer has capability in using self-defense. Right now, the officer has managed to stop his attack and continue with the body searching procedure and then handcuffs the suspect. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big applause for the woman police of Indonesian FPU. Ladies and gentlemen, now we are watching a car is entering the checkpoint arena. And based on intelligence information from the local police, the car suspects of keeping explosive materials.
At this time, we are watching the searching procedure which the K-9 unit involved to detect the existence of explosive. During the searching process, we can witness together that the sniffer dog react passively. That was shot by sitting in front of materials suggested to be explosive. Dog reactions will be different if it de detected the narcotics, crime persons, or corrupts. This is usually performed by dogs with search and rescue abilities. The active reactions are shot by barking. Ladies and gentlemen, because the K-9 unit found items that were suspected of explosive, they called the EOD unit to handle it. Ladies and gentlemen, we see escalating situation in checkpoint activity area and the Charlie Platoon adjust the stages of handling procedure by UN standard and the implementation of use of force according to the situation which applied from directive use of force for police company. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to see the fixed protocol on render disposal procedure which will be shown by EOD unit of Indonesian FPU. This unit equipped with EOD robot and piloted by three specialized operators who are experienced and have special qualification on defusing bomb. We could see also among the EOD operator there are policewomen from Indonesian FPU. The first step after the EOD team confirmed that it was an explosive and then the EOD team used a robot to observe the suspect of ex explosives. The robot is called DPS or Digital Vanguard Speech which is the fourth generation of Digital Vanguard. The robot is produced by the EN company and has weight of 56 kilograms. The personnel who involved in this EOD unit are parts of Indonesian National Police Mobile Brigade that experience its many bomb cases in Indonesia. The EOD team secured the explosive 
wrapped in a blanket bomb to be saved. Ladies and gentlemen. For your information, after the robot secured the explosive materials by the Indonesian FAO EOD team, later they handled the evidence to UN Mass Office to be secured for the next investigation. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause for Charlie Platoon and Echo Team for the amazing performance. Wow, that was amazing. Oui, monsieur, c'est super. Yes, but don't forget, they have the bravery. Yes, you don't need to question the courage from Indonesian FPU. They are beasts. Ladies and gentlemen, in accordance to the previous incident that shows security threat as the personnel and UN assets become the target are getting real. To prevent unexpected incidents, UNDSS give all postponed recommendation for all activity outside Supercam and UN premises base. However, one of the UN city neglect the recommendation and still carry on any kind of activity outside the premises. Ladies and gentlemen, the next show, we will show you the, about the VIP escort. As we see in the screen, it contains the diamond in the box formation, and then the vehicle formation, the scene neutralized the local police, handcuffing suspect, safe negotiation, vehicle maneuvers, right side gun contact, VIP Evacuation from the vehicles and return to the starting point of pickup. Ladies and gentlemen, in this scenario, assume that the World Food Program or WFP organized the inauguration of new WFP office and delivering food assistance directly to the communities as a form of zero hunger campaign. This event will attended by UN City coordinator residents and also WFP country manager as the host. With certain consideration, SMT asked head of police component to command Indonesian FU for escorting and protecting UN city coordinator residents. Ladies and gentlemen, let's see the performance of escort and VIP protection by Alpha Platoon. Now we see the escort team boarded two vehicles to pick up the VIP guest at the safe house in a convoy formation. The escort team has arrived at the safe house and they are preparing to form diamond in the box formation to pick up the VIP guest. The direct protection formation aims to reduce or even eliminate unwanted threats to VIPs during the walking movement. Now we are watching how the escort team pick up the VIP guest. This diamond in the box formation consists of nine agents four agents as outer and five agents as inner, plus one policewoman who serve as adjutant 
and will carry out assistance, security, and escort for the VIP. Ladies and gentlemen, the VIP Escort Series consists of six units of cars that have met the UN Escort Standards. Ladies and gentlemen, now the escort team finally arrived at the new office of WFP. The team is greeted by country manager WFP as the host and also the local communities. The escort team is forming a guard formation to escort the VIP guests to the podium so the important person will feel safe when delivering the speech. We can see together that the communities have gathered to receive food from the VIPs of the United Nations. Ladies and gentlemen, we see together the situation was not as expected. The Alpha team of FPU Indonesia actually pulled the VIP to return to the safe house for VIP safety. Disappointed communities have to return because it was disposed by the local police. Ladies and gentlemen, we are watching now that in the middle of the raid, the VIP escort faced a checkpoint situation by some rebels for an armed group. So the officers have to do negotiation. At the rebel checkpoint, over. Luckily, with the capability of negotiation by the team leader, the VIP escort team is allowed to pass the street. Ladies and gentlemen, we can see again, 
when FPU Indonesia was still on their way to a safe place, suddenly the escort team was blocked by the group and then the escort team was shot by the group. At this time, we went to convoy escort, implement the further security and rescue protection. Gentlemen, again and again, the escort team has been attacked from the right side by the armed group. Ladies and gentlemen, Papa Charlie is an activation code as a part of permitted contingency by escort team. Contingency plan is a part of police tactical plan unit and also part of alternative plan if incoming threat is happening and main operation plan didn't work as a plan. Ladies and gentlemen, the VIP has arrived safely to the safe house even though that was an effort from armed group who threat the life of the VIP. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the performance by Alpha Platoon in escort and VIP protection. Give applause to Indonesian FPU. Ladies and gentlemen, before we move on the crowd control performance, as we saw from VIP Escort, how amazing they perform. It is better than when they were in training. I think practice makes those perfect. Oh, yes, bien sûr, c'est magnifique. The maneuver of the driver, wow, the driving skill was amazing. Like we saw the Fast and Furious movies in front of our eyes. Maybe they are trained by Dom Toretto somehow, we never know. I believe a high discipline is needed in their training. How long have they trained? Well, they're supposed to train for seven months, but this is the third month of their training here in the peacekeeping center. The trauma? Wow, it's incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, as we can see on the screen, that. We are about to see the public order management, which contains negotiation and appeals. Unit disembarked to vehicle, create unit formation, barricade, unit through the barricades, APC unlock access, the fire department extinguished the warehouse, unit clearing wave, troops reform to unit, the unit carries out a bone offensive, the unit carries out the sit in stage, reform to unit. The unit carries out to the arrest methods. The, w, the AWC team sprayed water at the demonstration. Putting on the gas mask, the unit carries out the charge. Advanced unit by walking. Unit pass through the fire with technique. Unit charge, combat medic. Attack in the unit. 
handling using tourniquet, ambulance evacuation, team spot handcuffing suspect, and unit embarking to vehicle. All right, as we see the setup for crowd control is ready. Now let's see the performance of crowd control by Bravo Platoon. Ladies and gentlemen, because there are dissatisfied communities who are protesting and visiting WFE office, WFE then contact the local police to ask for security support. The situation got changed and the communities began to fight with the local police by trying to attack and make physical contact with the police. Ladies and gentlemen, what had really happened was the communities have been used by the armed group to fulfill their main purpose, kidnapping the manager. Ladies and gentlemen, we can see how the mob is setting up a barricade on the street to prevent anyone to enter the WFP office area. Ladies and gentlemen, because of the escalated situation and cannot be handled, local police ask for some help from the UN to protect the WFP office and send out firefighter team because the mob throwing bomb and burned the WFP storehouse. The mob are getting more anarchy and burning things on that area. Ladies and gentlemen, the riot control platoon has arrived at the location. They are now disembarking from the vehicle. For your information, that the riot platoon consists of 50 officers, which divided into five teams. 
Ah. One team is filled by five officers or two body system and one team leader. In addition, this platoon is also supported by seven policewomen, two firefighters, one reserve element team, four drivers, and one medical unit. The officers wear tactical full gear, which consists of helmets, masks, body vests, elbow and knee protectors, shoes, teeth sticks, shields, handcuffs, and the last are tear gas. We can see together that the platoon is doing a scanning towards the barricade in front of them before they move forward to prevent any booby traps on the barricade. The scanning is managed by a racket team with the backup from the protector team. The racket team check every detail carefully, but they remain in coverage to anticipate if there is a danger ahead of them, such as a booby trap or weapon attacks. After the scanning is done and it turned out to be clear, the racket team move forward and followed by the whole of the platoon. Now they began to set up a clearing waves formation in front of the vehicles towards the crowd and ready to manage the crowd. When the platoon was managing the community with some warning, we could see the fire on the WFP storehouse and then the APC broke the barricade to provide them a way to entry followed by the fire unit come directly to extinguish the fire. Ladies and gentlemen, as we can see, the presence of firefighting unit is needed in this situation. And on this scene, the firefighting unit is assumed to be provided by the local authority as an implementation of collaborative action and synergy of UN and the host country to maintain the security of civilians, UN personnel, and also UN assets. As a second step, the platoon commander gives a verbal warning to the crowd. But some of the crowd sit on the street as a form of their protest. We can see now that one of the women police is giving negotiation to the crowd that are sitting on the street. But unfortunately, the crowd ignores the warning and they are still sitting on the road as an action of closing the access road. The officers managed to arrest two people suspected of being provocateurs 
with the tactics of arresting and then take them to the APC to the be secured. We can see right now that the platoon is trying to push back and disperse the crowd using basic police techniques. The crowd still not be able to calm down. They keep attacking the officers. So that the officers need to arrest two more suspects using the arrest method. The team leader is throwing smoke bombs to the crowd, aiming to obscure the view of the crowd. Ladies and gentlemen, as we can see, the team leader fires the water at the demonstrators with the aim of repelling the crowd. Meanwhile, the platoon is currently installing gas masks that will protect their faces from the films. We can see the crowd is starting to give up and forced to step back. Ladies and gentlemen, now we are watching how the riot control platoon of Indonesian IFPU is sprightly crossing through the blazing fire. Also, the firefighters are moving quickly to extinguish the fire before it spread widely. And once again, the crowd is shot by water from the AWC, which is aimed to pull back the crowd that is getting more out of control.
Ladies and gentlemen, right now we see one unit vehicle approaching the mob. And there are three people from armed group attacking officers. Suddenly, gunshot rang out from the crowd. The platoon swiftly stepped back and take a prone position. The crowd panicked with the situation that is happening and they scattered to some themselves. In the next what? scene, we will see how the Indonesian FPU countering suspect action. One of the officers is shot on the thigh and the medical team responds with securing the officer to the ambulance rapidly. Ladies and gentlemen, we are watching the tactical medic procedure immediately as part of standard capability which has been to be mastered by Indonesian FPU personnel. In the incident, one person was submitted and then was arrested by an official to be submitted to the local police for further investigation. Ladies and gentlemen, we are watching the reserve elements team arrive at the location and they take over the situation to back up the riot control platoon. There is a firefighter between the armed group and the reserve elements team. They are trying to approach the combatants. They are sheltering themselves behind the shield and approach them smoothly. This movement permits them to approach safely and take down the combatants. We can see that the riot control platoon is now embarking to the vehicles. This platoon has successfully finished the task in securing the demonstration and dispersing the energy crowd. And now, they're gonna return to Garuda camp to do a consolidation. This is one of the riot control capabilities possessed by Indonesian FPU personnel which carry out professionally in executing their duties to secure the situation in Karana. Ladies and gentlemen, once again we would like to inform you that there are seven policewomen who joined the riot control platoon. Regardless of their gender, the policewomen are also capable of conducting tough tasks in the field and they are ready to be placed in any situation. Ladies and gentlemen from the succession in securing the situation, please give applause for Bravo Platoon! Ladies and gentlemen, the next show, we will show you about the tactical progression. We, will, we are going to show you about the drones carry out air patrols around suspect locations. SID did an aerial inventory by rappelling with EOD K9 men by police women. SID conducts an inventory of water with chasing dogs men by police women. SID established a tactical perimeter for troop rappelling. And then the sniper make observation. Penetration team on the perimeter around the suspect's house. EOD K9 ensuring for safety entry point to the house. And then the SIT perform penetration. Self combat medic. SIT penetrate the suspect using the chase dog. And SIT executing.
Ladies and gentlemen, now we reach at the end of the sequence of Indonesian FE operation capabilities. We were already so various capabilities of Indonesian FE personnel that supported by Indonesian FE contingent on equipment. And the moment we are going to see is the top of the scene from Indonesian FE personnel who implemented and integrated all special capabilities through demonstration of tactical progression by special intervention team of Indonesian FU. Ladies and gentlemen, let's see the profile of Indonesian FU special intervention team. Ladies and gentlemen, now we can see together on the sky there is a unit of drone as a first penetrator to collect intelligence information of the suspect location who kidnapped the WFP country manager. In this scenario, we assume that the location is located at remote area where it can be accessed by air and river. Ladies and gentlemen, for your information, drone unit of Indonesian FPU equipped with our multi-rotor drone with the DJI Matrix 300 RTK multi-rotor drone which has range 5 kilometers, altitude 1000 meters. And the capabilities of the camera such as 200 times zoom, laser range finder, target coordinates, moving object detection and thermal camera or night camera. Zero one, zero one, this is Garuda one. Message over. Garuda one, this is zero one. Send message over. Zero one. X3, X3, X3. You are clear to go. We go with you. Take. Roger that, sir. My God, this is zero one out. Ladies and gentlemen, we already heard the FBO contingent commander authorize the hostage redemption operation with codename X-Ray. For the following scene, on the screen now, we can see the infiltration process from the river with two rubber boats provided by River Unit. Meanwhile, on the sky, the chopper preparing to send down another team with rappling method. And for your information, one of them is a police woman from K9 unit. She will come down together with the dog and the rest of the team. Ladies and gentlemen, all of the SIT personnel mandated to have the specialized capabilities to undertake different type, typical of operation such as extraction, evacuation, and rescue operation, like what we are seeing right now and refer to the statement unit of requirement, the SIT also have to capable in high visibility deterring patrol tactics, quick reaction capability, tactical combat casualties, and basic negotiation capacities. Without any doubt in their mind, they are executing the missions with vigilance and caution.
Ladies and gentlemen, as we can see together that one of the personnel who come down from the helicopter to release the hostage as a woman police. The woman police go out from the chopper with the canine dog bravely. Well, it is not a problem for woman police to face obstacles because woman police have the same capabilities with the male police in carrying out tasks. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause for the SIT and the K-Woman Police Unit. Ladies and gentlemen, we already see that two snipers have moved to take their position earlier as they received the task to conduct the recon. After the sniper is ready on the position and got the sight of some suspect, they ask for the permission to execute and after they receive the permission, they go straight and shot the sus two suspects around the hostage areas. Ladies and gentlemen, as we can see that the two suspects have been successfully secured. Now the sterilization team with the dog and the woman police gets to their position. Ladies and gentlemen, as we can see together right now, the SID and the women police with the canine dog is moving towards to the final assault position. They are moving fast in line with silent mode. Then take their respective position. We can see the team is making perimeter around the area. The sterilization team with the canine dog is ensuring the door if it has any booby trap before they enter the room and they can expose breaching method. And the entry team has broke the windows with the medical breaching method so they can throw the flashbang to distract the suspects. We can see that they can enter the house and search for the hostages. As we can see, they have secured the hostage.
In one of the rooms, they found a suspect that is about to run away. But the canine dog managed to stop him and bite him down on the ground. Meanwhile, the process is going. One of the officers got shot by the suspect. The other teammate helped the shot officer immediately and prepared to bring him outside the hostage house while giving him first aid. On the other side, the sterilization team with K9 unit found a car and according to the information that one of the car contained explosives. Then the team conducted the explosive with breaching metal. After a bomb was found, they prepare for disposal. A bomb suit or a blast suit is a heavy suit of body armor designed to withstand to pressure generated by a bomb and any fragments. Parts of the bomb suit overlap for maximum protection. The suit protects in several different ways. It deflects or stops projectiles that may come from unexploded devices. I want ready for extraction. That was the whole series of operational capability simulation carried out by Indonesian FPU. And all of the action we have just witnessed have been adapted to the existing of UN procedure while taking into the UN mandate given to the Indonesian FPU task force and remaining guided by the greatest respect for human rights. We represent all the working relatives on duty to say thank you so much for your attention and Garuda! Garuda! Garuda!
Uh, I am uh, very impressed by your performance, and uh, I saw all the exercises. <laughs> I see that there is a lot of preparation and training that has been done uh, while you reach these standards. And I can only say that keep it up, keep yourself fit and trained so that when you go in the missions, you have the same level of uh, uh, preparedness that you have now. It is very impressive. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much, General. And uh, echoing the police advisor, this is an exemplary performance that we have seen for a very long time. Congratulations on an excellent performance. <laughs> However, I am the witness of previous performance also in Indonesia, which never disappointed there. So we do expect, hopefully, that the unit will be reaching peacekeeping at one point, since the expectation is very high. So before you know it, you will, do, you will be there. We have seen another excellent performance in FPU of MINUSCA. So what we have seen today is testimony of the Indonesian Home Police Unit and UN police personnel, what they can achieve in terms of protection of civilian, protection of UN personnel in the field mission. We'd like to thank the Indonesian authorities for excellent preparation again in terms of COE, logistic performance, and those colleagues who have been involved in preparation of this excellent unit. Again, my congratulations and wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Kita harus mendengar dari representasi UN perempuan. We would like to hear something from the representative of UN from women. Uh, thank you, everybody. This is my first time in Indonesia and first time inspecting an Indonesian unit. But I have to say, I, I've heard uh, great things. Your reputation precedes you. And uh, today's demonstration is just testament to the skills and the training and the preparation that you're putting into this. So I look forward to seeing the rest of your equipment. Thank you. Good morning. Yeah. Hello. Thank you very much. It was a wonderful demonstration. It reminds me when in 2016, an Indonesian FPU came to Italy and we trained together. And I see now in you the same participation, discipline, well-training, great performance. 
and really dedication and love to your country, your job, your profession. So thank you very much also from my side. Looking forward to meet you again somewhere in the world and Garuda. Saya atas nama pribadi, atas nama Divisi Hubung Internasional Polri, atas nama Indonesia National Police, setelah persiapan yang begitu lama, saya ingin mengucapkan satu kalimat. Kalian luar biasa! Kalian hebat! Garuda! Kita... Mendengar, saya mendengar langsung tadi dari Pak Atta dan Pak Faisal bahwa tidak ada yang performanya seperti kita Indonesia. Oke, okay, beliau bahkan bilang, saya mau foto sama mereka. Kita foto di sini, ada yang di atas EPC, kita ambil foto terbaik dengan background itu. Ya, silakan persiapan foto, silakan ya. Taking picture. So we are going to take picture first from the UN representative from New York. We'll be taking picture here. Then I would like to invite our colleagues from the PCC workshop to to take picture together and our colleagues from the AMS. Okay. Okay. So yeah, ada yang jongkok, ada yang berdiri. Okay. Agak ke belakang, please. Agak ke belakang, agak ke belakang, agak belakang. Mundur, mundur, mundur. Melingkar, melingkar. Fotonya kelihatan. Oke, okay. melingkar. Ya. Uh, kalian agak jongkok, 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 jongkok. Ya. Yeah. Komisioner, uh, please you are duduk, 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 duduk. Depan duduk. Santai aja duduk, duduk, duduk. Depan, depan. Ya. Yeah. Professor here. Yang depan duduk, duduk depan. Ya, yeah, depan duduk, depan duduk. Come on, come on here. Ya. Yeah. Oke. Okay. So. Oke, okay. silakan Pak. Ya, silakan di atas. Ya, yang penting beliau terlihat. Foto ini akan dipasang di Twitter. Ya, oke. Okay. Wajahnya pasang wajah gembira. Smiling face, oke. Okay? Kurang mundur. Ya. Mobilnya kelihatan, APC? Kelihatan, kalau nggak kelihatan kita mundur. Oke, okay, kita mundur, mundur, mundur. Mundur, mundur. mundur. So move back, sir. Move back. Little bit, Pak Faisal. Faisal, please be here. Ya. Yeah. Ya. Yeah. Eh, Neng, Neng, Neng. Minta, mundur. Ya. Yeah. Ya. Yeah. Weh, what? Lo udah tiduran aja lo, ngapain di situ sendirian? <laughs> Oke, okay. oke, okay, sekarang oke. Okay? Ya. Yeah. Udah yang depan tiduran juga nggak apa-apa udah. Oke. Okay. Ya, yeah, cepat cepat cepat. Satu. Ya yeah, udah ambil aja sikat. Dua. Cheese. Once again, cheese. Okay, thank you. I would like to invite our colleagues from PCC workshop. Please, coming. So you can sit in front or behind, any anywhere you like. Blending, please, blending. Mas, tolong diatur, Mas. Jangan gue yang atur. Ya. Yeah.
Our college from PCC, please come in. Okay, finish. Okay, I will count it. Okay. Photographer, are you ready now? Okay, one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, now cheese. One, two, three, cheese. Once again, one, two, three, cheese. Okay, okay one more. Precisi. Precisi, one, two, three. The last one is Garuda. Say Garuda times. Garuda. For the BCC workshop participants, we provide lunch in this center, floor, uh, second floor. We back to the center. Selamat pagi, kami beritahukan kepada seluruh hadirin yang hadir pada siang hari ini dapat mengunjungi tenda J-Force di sebelah kiri untuk melaksanakan makan siang.
Kaspa bunyi microphone Everybody jam masih ada masih on Pompa tanah kasih rata Goyang patah-patah Jangan kasih jeda habis Coba sama-sama Pompa-pompa lama-lama Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We inform you that all the distinguished guests from the police advisor you can enjoy the lunch on the 10th G Force on the back side of the podium. One more time for the police advisor, you can enjoy the lunch on the left side of the podium. Thank you very much. Everybody jump, 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 everybody
Diulangi untuk peserta AMS seluruhnya silakan berkumpul di tenda G4 semuanya semuanya. Setelah itu kita akan melaksanakan pengumuman di lapangan depan untuk di lapangan tempat latihan driving. Terima kasih. Cek cek musik 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 dimatin dimatin. Ya terima kasih. Baik, untuk peserta FPU keseluruhan setelah giat foto silakan perintah Pak Kadif berkumpul di tenda G4 untuk melaksanakan makan siang. Sekali lagi untuk peserta FPU, peserta FPU setelah melaksanakan kegiatan foto perintah Pak Kadif silakan berkumpul di tenda G4 untuk melaksanakan makan siang. Terima kasih.